Arguably, one of the most overmade statues is the Wolverine character or some variation of that. Now, the real problem is when they make so many awesome Wolverine, or in this case, Weapon X statues, which one do you choose? To give back to you guys, the Extreme Channel is giving away this giant Goro statue from PCS for our 20,000 sub giveaway. If you want to know how to win this, I'll tell you a little bit later in this video. Hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Today, we are doing what we call an Extreme Rumble or an Extrumble. That's where we take two statues that are very similar of the same character and we compare and contrast the differences in those statues and see if we can determine a winner. This is extremely important, not necessarily just for me because I don't need that many Wolverine statues even though I think I've owned about 25. You can check out an old countdown I did actually right here. But maybe you are trying to decide between two pieces. So today we're going to contrast these two one-fourth scale Weapon X pieces. One is by XM Studios and one is a custom or a private unlicensed commission. Now I've done individual videos on both of these. A long time ago I actually did the Weapon X statue and there's going to be some differences in the statue today compared to that video back then and we'll briefly highlight on those. And then recently I launched a review of this piece right here. So you can check that out as well. That's going to go into some detail that we may not cover today. So we're going to look at a number of different categories between these two statues and assign a winner to each category. Hopefully, because I'm going to let you guys know right now, that's going to be incredibly difficult. They are both amazing pieces. So let's start off with a little bit of background. So like I said, the one on my right is made by XM Studios. XM Studios mass produced these. I believe they made a thousand of them. And with that being said, this is licensed. So Marvel approved this and signed off on it. And it's a much older piece. Where the one on my left was a private unlicensed commission and they only made 70. Now we'll talk about price when we get to the value category, but they are both what we call one fourth scale, so four times smaller than a real life version of Wolverine, and these are both comic based. So they're not based off the Hugh Jackman model, they are based off the traditional Wolverine with their own modern twists on them. And they both tell a little bit different story of Weapon X, specifically with the base. So let's go ahead and just start off with that. They each have different bases. The one on my right, before we jump in, you're gonna notice it's missing all the screens. So the typical Weapon X statue comes with all these screens that I hate. I think they look cheap, I think they look plastic, but thankfully you can remove those. So we're gonna compare it how it is set up now. As I said, the XM Studios one shows him kind of breaking out of his tank where he was being housed as Weapon X. Maybe he was just created. There was liquid all over the base. There are wires. There is glass. It has writing on the side. It's a very cool, very excellent base where the custom one shows him out in the snow. So it's a very similar storyline. It's just more that he just escaped. Maybe he just broke out. He's still wearing all the stuff. This storyline in the comments traditionally takes place up in the north where it's cold, and both bases are done really well. Right now, we're not really talking about the paint or the sculpt on the bases, just the concept, because let's face it, the concept of these guys is pretty similar. The pose is a little bit different, which we'll talk about. But I think the base on XM Studios takes the cake, in my opinion. I think it's a very cool base. I think the idea is a lot more original. It's very cool, very different. And like I said, the screens are an option if you like that. Now let's talk about the concept of the Weapon X itself. There's really two big differences. First is actually the pose. So this one is a very fierce pose. He's ready to fight. XM Studios, he is as well. It's done a little bit differently. Both have the claws fully extended. I think both poses are fantastic. I think what XM Studios has going for it, it has that resin water effect all over him. It looks like this statue is really wet. It's still impressive to this day. Remember, this is one of the first statues they actually did it on. However, I still think it's pretty equal when you look at both of them. Now let's talk about displayability for a second. Well, they're both, I think, very accurate in size. You see the, the height is about the same. This one, the custom one, doesn't take up as much room, especially on the depth. He's looking a little bit more down, though, so you want to display him a little bit higher. I think that's a disadvantage. However, I think the larger part of the statue and all those screens are a disadvantage as well. So I don't really see any clear winner when it comes to displayability options. However, they do have some portrait switch outs, so let's look at that. Now, both come with a helmeted version. which both have a light-up feature. However, the light-up feature on the custom, in my opinion, is much better. 
They both come with an unmasked portrait, and I'm not a fan of either of these. However, I think I like the custom one slightly better. I've never been a fan of the XM Studios one. And the custom one has a third portrait right here that I'm not a fan of at all. In fact, this is an older picture because I put it right back in the box. Both come with metal claws. Both assembly was very similar. And I don't really see a clear winner in this category either. While the custom does have an additional head, I'm not a fan of it. These are the only two portraits I actually really like are the helmeted ones. Now let's look at the paint on these. So first they're done by factory. They're not done by a professional painter, but a painter in a factory who mass produced them obviously. And both paint jobs are extremely clean. I like what they did with the skin tones. Uh, I talked about this in the reviews, how around the nodules, there's actually a little bit of red that's done on both of them. I like the hair on Wolverine on both of them. It's done very different, but also very cool. They have some cool veinations, mm -hmm. incredibly clean on the helmets. I think the one advantage, again, I'm not going to give them another point for it, but the wet effect on the XM Studios one is fantastic. The bases, even though they're very different bases, I think the paint also is equally scored. These are both very well painted pieces, and I honestly don't think one has a huge advantage over the other. The one on my right was sculpted by the famous Daniel Bell. The one on my left sculpted by the famous Franco Carlissimo, two of the top players in the game right now. Now, with that being said, look at the anatomy on these. They both did an awesome, awesome job. I think it shows Wolverine how fierce he is. I think they really know human anatomy or mutant anatomy in this point. I like everything about this. There's more detail in the... There's more detail in the XM Studios helmet, but there's more detail in the boxes around his waist on the custom one. Both are amazing sculpts. I think both sculpts are five out of five, and I don't find a winner in that either. So really, kind of a useless video so far when it comes down to it. Both awesome sculpt, paint, and concept. They're the same character, very similar. Big variation in the base, so that could be a deciding factor. But for me, the deciding factor between these statues comes down to the value of them. So you have a couple things going on. As I said, they made 1,000 of the XM Studios. They made 70 of this one. So this one's a lot more rare, a lot harder to attain. However, this one costs two and a half to three times more than this one. Is it two and a half to three times better? No, it's not. I think they're actually pretty equal. So for me, the value kind of pushes it over to the XM Studios. So clearly, the winner, when it comes to value, even though they made a thousand of these, is the XM Studios. You can actually get this under retail nowadays. Now that actually, to me, plays a huge factor in the Extremble overall. If I have a statue that's just as good, or arguably almost as good as this piece, yet it costs two to three times cheaper, that's a no-brainer. So I think the XM Studios is the winner of the Extremble overall, simply based on the fact they executed on almost every aspect that the custom did, if not all the same aspects, and it is so much more affordable, despite the fact that they might have a much larger edition size. For me, when I collect, I don't do it as an investment, but I do it for what I enjoy. So price does play a big role in it. To win this Goro statue, first thing you gotta do is make sure you've liked this video, you've actually subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Second thing is leave a comment below and make sure it's a witty, entertaining, or funny comment. Because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm gonna pick a random video and the comment that has the most likes on it will be the winner of this Goro statue. So make sure your comment is entertaining to others and entertaining to Mr. X. Because if I like it, I'm actually gonna pin it to the tops to help you get more likes. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my logic. If you uh, think one is a winner for whatever reason, uh, honestly, I think they're both fantastic. So if you like this, hit that like video. So if you like this, hit that like button on your way out. Make sure to subscribe if you like stuff like this. I really appreciate you guys watching. Check out some of these other extrumbles. I am going to keep both of them because they're both fantastic. Talk to you. T I was going to say tomorrow, but it may not be tomorrow. Talk to you soon. Take care.